hello everyone today's video explains how you can install a web server on your home computer so that you can host files and other stuff at your home and access those files from anywhere for an example look at the server which i have set up at my home it uses apache xam server xam stands for x which is any operating system apache mysql php and Perl. I uh, don't need to care about those things anyways though to just host a server you need to install XAMPP which you can google search and download install XAMPP start it by clicking on a button here which says start you just need to start Apache to host your own server at home after you start Apache what you need to do is you just need to go to your uh, C drive your XAMPP folder and then you need to go to htdocs htdocs is a folder where all your server files are stored so whatever is hosted would be required to be kept over here so if you access your computer what you will see is all the files which are over here to show an example I've created an index file which can be accessed from any browser so to access it i just need to get my ip address since i am on the same computer i can just type in localhost and that should load the file which i just showed so so it loaded a file it loaded index.html which is the home page of the server which i just created and you can just use it to access all your files from anywhere around the world so for example i have created this home page which allows you to access two folders songs and files where i have kept my data um like for example my list of songs so to do that what you need to do is install xamp after install xamp make a file called index.html and show your home page and with basic html language you can access all your files you can create anchor tags and you can access all the folders you want anywhere around the world the problem which many people face is that they have a dynamic ip address what this means is that the ip address changes as soon as they reconnect to the internet the isps the isps don't have a fixed ip address it changes frequently so for example right now my ip address is uh, something which I can check by using IP chicken website ipchicken.com allows you to get your IP address so this is my current IP address which is the IP address of my router but if I reconnect my internet if I disconnect it and connect again and if I reload this page then my IP address would be sometime would be something different that would hinder the access to this computer because if I want to access my computer from anywhere I would require to have the same IP address but with the dynamic IP address which most of the ISPs provide that won't be possible so to get a static IP address what you can do is you can have an application which is called NoIP NoIP provides dynamic DNS so go to the website noip.com and go to dynamic DNS and you can download the software and install it which is for free for personal use you can have three host names with it so what happens is with dynamic DNS with no IP software um, you can install a software called no IP on your website and what this does is it allows you to have static URL from which you can access your home computer from anywhere so for example I have installed the software I just need to register my account on their website after I register an account I need to create a host how would you create a host is you would need to first log in into the account and let me log in and show it to you so after you're logging into a noip.com account you can add a new host by just clicking on add a host button and it would just take you into a page where you can enter the name of the host which you want and some other settings you need not care about other settings you just need to tell it which host name to use and you could type the host name here for example you could give your own host name and that would be connected with another name which is ddns by ddns.net by default you could select any other name from the list of names available or instead if you own your own domain name then you can even use your own domain name and connect it with no ip 
so after you tell it the host name to use you could just go further and add a host after you finish adding host it would take around one to two minutes for it to process and and then what you would need to do is you need to go to edit hosts and uh, add your host over here like i have done like just check this box and tell it to select that host and after you have done it everything is set uh, one more thing which is required is you need to make sure that you're forwarding your IP address your computer's IP address so for example if you are behind a router the router would prevent outsiders to access your computer so the devices which you have inside the router's connection inside the LAN connection so if you're hosting your server on your home computer you need to forward your local IP address uh, for example, every router assigns an IP address like my router did here, which is 192.168.1.102, which is the IP address which my router assigned to my computer. The devices which are accessing my network or if there is some other device from outside my network that is from outside my router and which is trying to access devices connected to this router. Like for example, when we went to IP chicken, IP chicken showed show, showed us a IP address which started from 115. So that IP address is my router's IP address. That IP address was given to me by my ISP. That router's IP address is specific and is only connected, is only um, relevant with my router. But my computer or any device, laptop, computer, mobile phone, which are connected to my router would have their own IP addresses in turn which are given by the router itself so here 19.168.1.102 is given by my router to this computer device which is going to host my files which is going to host my home server so by default a router always um, blocks or does not allow outside connections to get in and see or locate or access files or access computers which are inside the router which which is a safety feature but if you want to actually allow it if you want to allow outside computers to access a computer inside your LAN network you need to forward your computer's IP address to your router it is a kind of linking for example here you need to go to your uh, router's IP address which is normally 192.168.1.1 uh, or it would be different according to your router which you use after you open your routers page you need to find something called forwarding and once you go to forwarding you need to add rules these rules specify the connections or the linkages which are there from outside computers to inside computers and the port numbers which are to be forwarded the apache server which would host our files usually uses port Sports 80 and 443. Port 80 is for an HTTP connection. 443 is used for HTTPS, secured HTTP connection. So if you just want to host a normal file server or a normal website or a normal server to access from outside, you would just need to you just need to forward one port, which is port 80. So you would just add a new rule and what you would need to specify is the port which you want to forward in our case it is port number 80 the IP address on which the service is hosted so the IP address on which a service is hosted is our own computer on which the server is going to be running so to find out what the IP address is you need to execute a command in your command line or in your terminal the command is ipconfig ipconfig will tell you the IP address which is for your computer in my case it is 192.168.1.102 as we had seen before so just write down this IP address over here 192.168.1.102 that will route connections coming from outside the connection would first go to the router then the router would forward that connection to this computer which is 0.1.102 on port number 80 and the protocol is you could select all or you could only select a specific protocol all is a better option i guess because some applications if you're not using http if you're using some other application it would 
even use UDP or it is just better to have everything enabled and select a common service port which would be HTTP in our case and HTTP directly selected TCP but it, if it was something else it would have selected UDP and it depends on the kind of application for, for our case we're just using a website access or normal Apache server access so it uses HTTP that's why our port is 80 and that's why it is TCP and just save after you save, it would just add a new rule for it and you have to make sure that you have enabled it. And that is it. You need to check your no IP application and make sure or you have got all the text in place. And you could just access your website by going to your by going to your browser and typing in the host name which you just registered. So in my case, I typed in my host name that is bhavishnande.ddns.net and it loaded my server for me another problem which you might have which you might get is a router normally dynamically gives ip addresses so as your isp gives out dynamic addresses even your router can give dynamic addresses to all the devices which connect one by one so the first device which connects is normally 192.168.1 1.100 the second device is 0.1.101 the third device is 0.1.102 and so on but if you would want to have this connected this device connected which would then if if you if you would turn off the computer and connect back again or some other devices connect in between the turn off and turn on time your internal ip address that is 192.168 that address would change so what you would have to do is you would have to make sure that even that address remains same so to do that you would need to find another feature in your router configuration which is ip and mac binding what this does is you have mac addresses mac addresses are machine addresses for every computer so it binds a, it binds an ip address with your mac address so for example on the right hand side i've given over here that if your mac address is this then you can specify that for this machine i want this particular ip address so whenever your router starts it reserves this ip address which you provide for only this machine so for example if you bind an ip address 192.168.1.100 and even if some other devices connect before your own device since this ip address is already registered your router will skip and your router would then instead assign the next ip address which would be 192.168.1.101 to the first device which connects and whenever your computer or your device goes on it would get the ip address which was predefined so you would need to enable arp binding and you would need to add a new rule which just has two fields in it the mac address of your device which is hosting your server and your ip address if you want to find mac address you can do it from a command called ipconfig space forward slash all this gives detailed information compared to just ip address just this gives detailed information compared to just ipconfig and you would need to find your mac address which looks something like this for my case it is 00-24-8c it is starting with physical address so physical address is your mac address and it never changes ip address on one hand change while physical address never change because physical address because physical addresses are specific for the network cards which you connect so you would just copy this physical address over here and the ip address which you want to reserve over here and we just save that and whenever you restart the router you reconnect all the devices the ip address would be bound to that particular mac address and it would never change so you wouldn't need to care about anything else only those things are essential for setting a home server this was indeed a beginner's guide it is by no means a guide which explains how to do coding how to do complicated stuff it is just an introductory guide which explains how a person could start a home server hope you all found it useful thank you for watching till the end bye bye see you soon